Besides winning the Stanley Cup, the NHL Draft is perhaps the most exciting time in any given season. Because we as fans get to see the next generation of players, players that may not only change the history of their team, but the very landscape of the NHL. However, finding these players can be tricky, if not near impossible. As the development curve of an NHL prospect can be extremely sporadic, which leads scouts with a very tough job. As they have to try to predict what an 18 year old kid will look like in five years. And because of this high risk level, any little thing can make a prospect's draft stock tank. Because in some cases, we have seen projected first round picks fall all the way to the seventh round. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at players who fell very hard in their draft years. And we're gonna to try to understand why they did and perhaps they turned into massive steals or perhaps all the scouts were right in letting them pass. So comment down below if your team has ever drafted someone who's fallen in their draft class and whether or not they turned into a bust or maybe a massive steal, comment down below. And press subscribe for some more awesome content. Let's get straight into this video. We will start in 2007 with Angelo Esposito. And this is definitely one of the biggest falls from grace in NHL history. In 2005, Angelo Esposito was seen as the next exceptional player from the CHL. With some scouts even comparing his hockey sense to Sidney Crosby, so Esposito had some massive expectations. So in 2005, he would join the Quebec Ramparts. And alongside of Alex Radulov, Esposito would rack up an astounding 98 points in his rookie season. Now, take that with a grain of salt because Radulov would put up 152 points this season, so his production was strongly linked to Radulov, but regardless, 98 points was extremely impressive. On top of this, Esposito would also help carry the Ramparts to winning the Memorial Cup, and all this made many scouts rank Esposito as the number one pick for the 2007 draft. So, heading into his draft year on a team without Alexander Radulov, Esposito was expected to top his rookie season. However, it didn't happen. He didn't play bad, but without elite talent surrounding him, massive holes in his game were exposed, but he still ended up with 79 points in 60 games, so not bad whatsoever. In fact, he was still ranked within the top 10, but because he failed to meet his expectations, Angelo fell to pick number 20 to the Pittsburgh Penguins, which was seen as a massive potential steal for the Pens. As Esposito heading into his draft year was ranked number one over Patrick Kane. However, Esposito would decline every single season afterwards. As he put up 42 points in 35 games the next year, he bounced back and forth in the HL and ECHL, and then finally he left Italy. In fact, Angelo never ended up playing a single game in the NHL. And considering that he was a projected first overall pick, this was very eye-opening as we have never seen a projected first overall pick fail to play a single game in the NHL. Next, we have the 2009 NHL Draft, and this story is fascinating. In 2008, Anders Lee had a massive dilemma. He was a star quarterback in his high school, who was voted Gatorade Player of the Year in his state, and he was a finalist for Mr. Football, a highly coveted Minnesota football award. However, on the other hand, Lee was also a star hockey player. So heading into his draft year, Lee had to decide between the NHL or the NFL. And amidst this extremely difficult decision, he opted to play his draft year with his high school, which led to him receiving a lot of this exposure and also led many scouts to be scared off by Lee as they thought his priority was football. And so many teams didn't even know if Lee was gonna even play hockey after high school. And this scared scouts so much, he went from a potential second, if not first round pick, to falling all the way down to the sixth round, where he was drafted by the New York Islanders. And so after a lot of internal struggle, Lee opted to continue his NHL journey. And so after having a great season in the USHL, Lee went on to dominate three seasons with Notre Dame in the NCAA. And today, Anders Lee is an elite goal scorer in the NHL. And of course, he's the captain of the New York Islanders. So for someone who was so talented in two sports, it's amazing to think that he also could have been a star quarterback in the NFL. Next, we have the 2011 NHL Draft. And this one is absolutely absurd, as we saw another casualty of the Russian factor. As Nikita Kucherov, who was a top five talent, fell all the way to number 58 in this draft. And obviously hindsight is 2020, but given Kucherov's insane production in his draft year, it is honestly just mind blowing that so many teams would be afraid to draft Kuch. As he registered 58 points in 41 MHL games, which is a Russian Junior League, 
He played really well in his KHL appearances. And on top of this, well, Kucherov had 11 goals, 21 points in the U18 World Juniors. 21 points. Now, at the time, there definitely were some concerns with this game. He was a bit undersized and had some holes in his defensive game, but his skill level was through the roof, and he arguably had top 5, if not top 3 talent in this draft. But regardless, everyone would decide that this risk level was too high, and he fell right into Tampa Bay's hands at number 58. And today, well, Kucherov is a top talent in the entire NHL. As last season, he put up an incredible 128 points, shattering totals that haven't been touched in decades, which earned him a Hart Trophy, an Art Ross Trophy, and of course, a Ted Lindsay Trophy. And honestly, the Russian factor is a very interesting phenomenon, as it has been met with these players being the biggest steals in their draft classes, or these players just never choose to leave Russia. But this Russian factor has definitely been fading in the past decade. In fact, in the last decade, we have seen Russian players drafted nearly quadruple, with last season being an all-time high with 28, as we happen to see Vasily Pogosin go through this exact same scenario last season. So, I guess time will tell if this stigma goes away entirely. Next, we have the 2012 NHL Draft. Now, when you think about this draft, many people tend to point towards Phil Forsberg. And how he was supposed to be a top 3 talent, but right before his draft he was declared over scouted, whatever that means, and he then proceeded to fall outside of the top 10. However, there is actually a far more absurd storyline in this draft, and that is the story of Nick Aber. Aber was a good sized elite skating defenseman who broke into the OHL in 2011. As he registered 41 points in his rookie season and looked like a potential elite puck moving defenseman. As he had size, he could skate, and he had tremendous vision. So much so, Nick Aber was considered a consensus top 5 pick heading into his draft year. However, in his draft year, Aber would regress, as his point totals would fall off after Ryan Ellis would leave the team. And on top of this, heading into his draft year, he showed up to training camp very out of shape and was reported to have very bad attitude. And I know what you might be thinking. This all sounds pretty bad, but considering he was considered a top 5 pick at one point, a team drafting him late in the first, or maybe even late in the second, could have the steal of the draft. Well, that is what some thought. However, Nick Aber was the, literally the last pick of the 2012 NHL Draft. As he went from a consensus top 5 pick, to being drafted 211th overall in the 7th round. So alongside of Esposito, this is one of the biggest falls in grace in NHL history. And today, Aber is in the minors, and has yet to play a single game in the NHL. And honestly, Aper has done pretty well considering this controversy, as he's been a pretty good HL defenseman and has done well in the KHL and SHL, but regardless, his story is crazy. And lastly, I will end in 2014. And until the last couple of drafts, I've been noticing some pretty weird scouting patterns, specifically with Swedish prospects, and more specifically with Swedish prospects in Osvenskin. As we have seen numerous prospects such as Elias Pettersson, Phil Forsberg who I just mentioned, and even Phil Broberg from last draft. And these players' talent was just discredited because they were playing in a second tier Swedish league because they weren't playing in the SHL. And this is exactly what happened to David Pasternak. Because in this draft, David Pasternak was hands down a top 10, if not top 5 talent, but fell all the way down to number 25. And this happened for a variety of reasons. To start, I believe there was some correlation to Phil Forsberg, because just two years prior, scouts panicked at last second, and Forsberg fell from the top three outside the top 10. And this mindset could have definitely been applied to Pasta, as he registered a very impressive 24 points in 36 games, playing against men and ex-NHL players. He had a great U18 and a great World Juniors as an underager. And Pasternak's talent proved to be very obvious because in a fairly shocking fashion, Pasternak would join the Bruins lineup the next season. As if he was drafted in the top 5, and he would put up an extremely impressive 27 points in 46 games, as well as being over a point per game in the AHL. And today, Pasternak is arguably the best player from this draft. I've gone back and forth to dry saddle, but regardless, he's a top talent in the entire NHL, and I would go as far as to say that he's a top 5 forward as he currently has 90 points and 70 games before the end of the season, and he was only getting better every single season. And with Pasternak and now Pedersen, they are really paving the way on how we view certain leagues for development. As Pasternak just one year after he was drafted, made 29 out of the teams completely question how they go about scouting. 
because Pasta was a very obvious talent who just got overlooked. But anyways guys, can you name anyone who fell in their draft year? Comment down below. And press subscribe for some more awesome hot content. We are so close to 15,000 subscribers. Just insane guys. The support has been amazing guys. I hope everyone's doing well. Thank you guys so much for watching and girls, see you guys later.